Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian with Simple Man's Comics, where we amplify your comic collection through community and integrity. And in this video, we're going to give you the hot and cold comic market trends for the week. But before we get into that, as always, let me introduce my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on, comic family? Simpleman's Comics Family, CBSI Nation. We are happy to be here. As Brian said, it is all about community and integrity, and that's why we are bringing you not just a hot list, but a cold list, letting you know not just what's moving on the comic market, but what is stale and could present some buying opportunities. Real quick, before we get into the list, I want to welcome brand new Patreon members. We got Ron Jam Inc. from the Comic Book Fiend Club. Make sure you guys check them out on Instagram and Comic Book Fiend Club and Ron Jam. Also, we have Eric Lissick. We also have Jose Blancas as well as Mike Conrad. So welcome and thank you for supporting this channel. Really appreciate it. Newest Patreon members, guys. Shout out to them. So, we are post New York Comic Con, right? Absolutely. Wasn't a lot of... There was some news that came out, but nothing compared to San Diego, right? Right, yeah. Most of the news, I think, from New York Comic Con was more in the indie comics realm, which did, doesn't tend to get the same, say, nationwide, worldwide traction that you get when you got, like, MCU news or things like that. Marvel was more um, making publishing announcements. Yep. Donny Cates on Thor, things like that. So, yeah, we got new writer, Donny Cates. I don't know. Have you heard of him? Uh, you know, I'm not real familiar. I think he writes a couple books, though. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sad to see Jason Aaron go, but I'm glad he's passing Mjolnir over to Donny Cates. But, hey, we're going to find out. Any NYCC stuff on the hot list or on the cold list? Let's find out right now, starting with that first hot pick from Comic Man Andy. We're working on bringing some heat here, guys. Comic Man Andy, and I'm back this week. Bringing you a hot pick, and my hot pick this week is Spawn. Yeah, I've been working on this video all night, and I struggle with why it's hot. Um, I don't know. Digging around online and looking, the only thing I can grab is data, and... Data online is telling me that this is hot. Is it hot in my heart? Eh, I'm a data guy, so yeah, seeing the data tells me it's hot, I'm going to believe it's hot. Am I running out and buying it? No, I'd be selling all day long with this. Um, well, let me share with you a couple of my favorite Spawn covers. Uh, you know, Spawn number one and 9.8. The, the print one run was high. Getting a 9.8 is not hard. Getting a 9.8 in a newsstand, pony up for that one. Get them while you can. These prices, um, I feel like they're just going to keep going up. Spawn number nine, first Angela, new stand edition, and it's a white cover. It's first appearance, good spec cover, or good spec book with an all-white cover. Um, it's kind of got a trifecta. Gunslinger Spawn, I've personally seen this for almost 300 some odd in a local shop. Um, CGC 9.8, like 300 plus. I love Spawn 300. You want to talk about high print runs? What are there, 12 covers, guys, to this? 12 covers? I love this cover. Did I buy it? No, I'm go I'm waiting. At $8 a cover with 12 covers, I just didn't get on that bandwagon right now with so much going on out there. SDCC. Spawn 299. I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to go pinkies out. Go peace out. Catch you guys on the flip side for my cold pick. Enjoy it. So right before we talked about this pick, we talked about New York Comic Con. I think one of the hottest things, especially coming out of New York Comic Con, was Spawn. Andy showed a lot of other great covers right there. But what do you think, Jack? Well, yeah, I mean, Spawn's been hot for a long time, Brian. Um, you know, obviously there was movie talk, but I don't think this is movie driven. I really just think Spawn is starting to hit classic series status. It's getting to a point now where people who grew up collecting Spawn, like myself, are getting to an age where that nostalgia is kicking in and they're going back and getting all of those old back issues that they didn't own. And that combined with possible movie news, um, new character in She-Spawn getting a lot of attention, a new version of She-Spawn. Um, and 
And I think that, that that's why Spawn has really been the talk of the community lately. That plus some of these like uber limited variants coming out at conventions has had the entire community buzzing for Spawn for quite some time now. Right. So thanks for that pick, Andy. And we're going to go into the next pick from Cover Tunes author and comicbookinvest.com, Mike Morello. Hey, everybody. Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with this week's hot pick uh, amongst my uh, sort of Star Wars skiff and barge scene. Um, this, is the old, this is the old place where I used to do these hot colds, and, uh, and it's sort of been taken over by all this awesome Hasbro stuff. But um, anyway, uh, this week's hot pick is going to be a, a surrounding uh, sort of a variety of characters that kind of go together, and it's all the stuff that's to do with Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Now that the Hulu show for Robbie Reyes has been shut down, everyone is focusing attention on other Ghost Riders. There's been some teases uh, that there's going to be something surrounding more than one Ghost Rider in a Ghost Rider show of some sort uh, from Marvel. Uh, and, of course, there's the new Marvel Ghost Rider number one that just came out last week, which is sort of the Johnny Blaze, Danny Ketch thing. Um, Lil, uh, Lilith has already popped up in that. There's already talk about Mephisto in that. So I think it's pretty obvious which books everyone should have their eye on. And I think some of this stuff is obviously, you know, the usual suspects. You've got your Marvel Spotlight 5, which is the big boy. Um, and this is going up like crazy. Um, it's, it's sort of going up slowly, but really steadily over the last couple of years. And I think as soon as we get some casting or something, um, or we get uh, a trailer, this is going to this is gonna pop in a really big way. As I think, of course, is Ghost Rider number one, um, the uh, sort of original number one from the ongoing series. And then you've got first Mephisto in your Silver Surfer number three. This book, I mean, when I got this book, I, I got this maybe two years ago for about 50 bucks. And you can't touch it for that now, not in any condition. It's a tough book. Then, of course, you've got the Hellstrom show coming as well. So you've got uh, Damon Hellstrom. So you've got his first appearance sort of debated between Ghost Rider number two and uh, Marvel Spotlight number 12. And then there's, of course, the Marvel Spotlight 12 and 13 have the origin of Damon Hellstrom in it as well. Um, and then also don't sleep on um, his sister, Satana Hellstrom, her first appearance in Vampire Tales 2. Um, and she also pops up in these. Then, of course, there is the uh, Rise of the Midnight Suns Ghost Rider number 28, uh, part one. Remember, this is a polybag thing, so you may find it polybagged or you may not. You may not. But it's also the first appearance of Lilith, and I think she's going to be an important character as well. And then a couple of others, of course, not to sleep on, are uh, this is the final uh, issue from Ghost Rider for the original ongoing series number 81, a really scarce issue. And then, of course, there's first Danny Ketch in Ghost Rider number one from this series as well. So tons of books to look out for. There's many more. Um, but these are, the, of course, these are sort of the big boys. And, you know, honestly, a lot of the books in that stack can be gotten still for 10 or 15 bucks. Of course, not the Marvel Spotlight 5 or the Ghost Rider 1 or the first Mephisto. But the other stuff you should still be able to find relatively cheap. And I think now is the time to do it before we get any uh, kind of big trailer or casting or any of that. So that's my hot pick for the week. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Mike gave us a plethora of books within his hot pick and a plethora of characters. We're going to contain it to catch Johnny Plays, Ghost Rider, but of course it branches out into those other characters, Mephisto, Hellstrom. Either way, great pick. Looked like he almost poked his eye out on a lightsaber there when he was putting those books down for a second. My biggest question is, when you dig those books out for your picks like that, do you put them away right away or do they sit out for a while and you go, damn, I got to put these books back? Because that's how I roll. But check what do you think about the pick. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I'd be uh, embarrassed to turn this camera around the other way and show <laughs> you the mess of books I've got going on back there. But no, it's a great pick. Um, you know, we talked about Robbie Reyes previously on the show. I've said I, I'm a big fan of Robbie Reyes, but I like Ghost Rider in general. We've talked about Ghost Rider on several shows. Um with the Ghost Rider number one series that has multiple Ghost Riders in it. It's been talked about the upcoming Avengers storyline. That even includes Cosmic Ghost Rider in it. Um, we've talked about that on the last call show right here, Sibylins Comics, Friday, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Um, so, yeah, that, I totally agree. Ghost Rider uh, is kind of bubbling up in the market. It, it may not be red hot, but it's on the way. And that's why I think there's still some meat on the bone and it's still a good time to pick out those books. But I'm going to give you one more bolo, Brian, other than what he mentioned. 
Marvel Age 115 for you true firsters out there, which is, of course, the Rise of the Midnight Suns preview issue, as well as there's that Midnight Suns ash can. Those two books, um, they're kind of under the radar. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about them. Um, they're not the easiest books to find in back issue bins, but they're also not expensive at all. So those are ones I would keep an eye out for. Um, Marvel, we know Marvel Age books have popped before. We just talked about Ash Cans and Preview Editions as hot on this show a good week ago. Um, so those are ones that I would keep an eye out for. If you see them in that sub $10 range, could be good buys. Right. And if you watch this show, I was talking to Jack off the off the record before we were talking about this, but if you've been watching this show, that Mephisto book has shown up quite a bit within these hot picks lately. Yeah, there's clearly some speculators all over that book. And we're going to roll right on into our next hot pick this week. What's up, everybody? This is Peter Renna coming to you with my hot pick for this week. Well, it's October. Season's starting to change. Temperature's starting to drop. Cracked open my first pumpkin-themed fall beer of the season. <sighs> Not quite ready for it, but uh, I guess we got to get into it. So, what's heating things up in the market? Well, everybody wants to probably talk about all those uh, NYCC variants and exclusives. I want to talk about a little news that came out to, at uh, New York Comic Con, and that's that uh, formerly Donny Cakes is going to take over Thor with a new uh, series coming up. So, we know Donny Cakes has already dipped into that Thor God of Thunder before, so I gotta imagine he might hit that well once again. So my hot pick is Thor God of Thunder. Now there's a number of books already in this series that people are looking after. There's the uh, number two, which is the uh, first Gore, the God Butcher. I mean, that's like a $40 book. Uh, we got five and six, which uh, goes back into that uh, storyline where you got uh, could be related to Null with the Necro Sword. I mean, this number number six alone right here, this is $60 right now, a couple of sales just this week. But uh, then you got some speculation with number eight and the Goddesses of Thunder, his granddaughters. That uh, got a little bit of heat. Number 11, there was a bit in here where it looked like uh, Thor was covered in a Venom Ooze-like bit. So this has been in like a $12 book recently for some reason or another. And then uh, Mortal Hulk is actually kicking some things off, too, with this, with uh, issue number 19, which is the first appearance of uh, Dario Agar, if I'm pronouncing that right, who's supposed to show up in Immortal Hulk number 27. And then he turns into the Minotaur in uh, issue number 20. And uh, let's not forget that now, the last issue of the series, 25, uh, featured a cameo of uh, Jane Foster as uh, Thor. So, I mean, this series has already been a treasure trove of... Uh, little hits and scores so who knows you know where the rest might come in there's 25 issues in this run uh you can pick up the whole set for i don't know 200 300 somewhere in there uh, or you can try to find deals buy them in lots but uh as of right now thor god of thunder it's hot and i think it will stay that way for a little bit longer hey jack remember when kid loki was hot <laughs> yes i do i don't <laughs> <laughs> But that's for a different conversation. Here we're talking about Thor, King of Thunder, which we kind of talked about at the beginning of the show. Hot right now. I'm a huge fan of Jason Aaron, as are you. Yes. And I enjoyed that run at the beginning, but no doubt Donny Cates has made this run relevant. And then with the news coming out of NYCC that he's going to be taking over author duties on it, even added some more fuel to the fire. But great hot pick from Peter. What do you think, Jack? Well, first off, I feel like you're using your Department of Defense skills right now because I mentioned uh, my books all over the place over here. I'm literally looking at two first appearances of Kid Loki, and I feel like you're breaking my heart with that dead spec right now. But, but I totally agree. This is like a rock-solid pick. Um, that first Necro Sword uh, and the Gore, the God Butcher first appearances are just going through the roof. Um, you know, you've got movie talk. Combined with, we all know what Donny Cates is going to do. The one thing I would say is also be on the lookout for even older stuff because we Donny Cates pulls from all over the place. Um, but I definitely think that that God of Thunder run is going to be the main one to keep an eye out for. Um, I've got a bunch of like dollar issues in my dollar box that I take to convention that are like non keys. I'm pulling those out at this point. I think that entire run there is no filler. That's going to become a classic run and one you need to pay attention to. Right, this is the part where the collector in me outweighs the speculator because I have such a fondness for that run that I refuse to sell any of them. And I understand sell them now while they're high, you can buy them back while they're cheap, but I can't bring myself to do it. 
Like it's one of those things where I was like proud to be the person that was enjoying that run when no one was really talking about it. And the, it's just Thor and Green Lantern are two of my favorite characters, so I can't bring myself to get rid of those. But people that are selling them, they're making good money on them right now, and those books are hot. Yeah, I can respect that though, Brian. And I'm not going to lie, I do have a couple copies of that old Kid Loki issue myself. <laughs> our next hot pick this week comes from Tales from the Flipside member, Brian McClay. What's going on, everybody? Brian McClay from CBSI presents Tales from the Flipside. I'm here to give my hot pick this week. I am uh, feeling a little under the weather with the with the seasons change and stuff like that. It's my time, you know, my one time of the year I usually get sick and turn into a big baby. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I feel it coming. I feel that sickness kind of sore throat type thing. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug along because I've got a really crazy hot pick for this week. Uh, it's a little outside of the box, uh, bucking the trend a little bit here. But uh, I think it's a very important tool for comic speculation and just for comic collectors in general because it really opens your eyes to some stuff that uh, you might not have heard of. Um, and and I, I just think it'll it'll kind of – it's light a little fire under your guys' butts to get out there and get some of the stuff you might not know of and make you excited about collecting again. Um, and that is the Walker Report. Uh, Tim Walker, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the ghost or comic whisperer. If you don't know how to get to the Walker Report, I'm going to show you guys how to get to the Walker Report. Go to comicbookinvest.com and uh, just scroll down. Oh, look at that. There's the Hot 10. If you guys don't know, check out the Hot 10 show at uh, the Flipside channel every Friday at 11 p.m. Eastern time. But go ahead and just keep scrolling and go to the Walker Report there. And as you can see, here we go, the Walker Report. Uh, a couple weeks back, you remember, a couple of presenters had picked uh, dead, uh, or excuse me, Tank Girl as their hot pick. And we all know that the first appearance of Tank Girl is a UK magazine called Deadline Number 1. Super tough book to find, especially in high grade. Uh, but, hey, the comic whisperer, he goes out and hits a home run and pulls six of them. The Walker Report is basically like a, a haul report. You know, these are the books that he's picked up in the last you know, week or so. And then, uh, of course, he's talking Spawn. Spawn's super hot. Everybody knows how hot it is. Early 200 issues for Spawn are super Saiyan hot, as the Walker, the ghost, the comic whisperer says. Uh, some turtle stuff. So there you go, guys. That's the Walker Report. Very cool stuff. Go check it out. It uh, It's worth looking into and uh, giving you some new ideas out there. Uh, please check out the Hot 10 show every Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on the Flipside channel. And do me a favor and check out the podcast, youtube.com slash the podcast. Uh, it's my other podcast that I do. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for everything. And uh, to uh, Jack and Brian. I want to say you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up. All the other presenters, man, these guys are good. Uh, hot and cold show. I'm out. So Byron McClay, Tales from Flipside, their podcast is Mondays, 9.30 p.m. on the Tales from Flipside channel. And, of course, they also have the CBSI Hot 10 show Friday nights, 11 p.m. on their channel as well. His hot pick, Tim Walker. If you don't know Tim Walker, is a CBSI member. He writes the Walker Report, as he was pointing out. Make sure you guys go to comicbookinvest.com. Check out Tim Walker's articles there. If you like hauls, he has fantastic hauls. And it's not in video format, but it makes it easy to read so you can stroll and see. People like to see covers and artwork. It's full of it there. Weekly article, right, Jack? Yes, weekly. Yes. So make sure you guys go to comicbookinvest.com. I'll put a link to the category of that website in the description of this video so you guys can check it out. But, Jack, real quick, what do you think of this pick? Well, this is one of my favorite picks we've had in recent weeks. Like Brian said, um, Tim Walker writes the Walker Report for ComicBookInvest.com, which is essentially his haul column. It's a column that focuses on Tim talking about what books he's purchased in that given week for his resale business. And Tim is one of the biggest and best resellers in the comic secondary market game. But... To say like the Walker Report is Tim Walker is honestly selling the man short. 
way before Comic Book Invest was even a thing, he was one of the most prevalent names on the CBSI Google Plus forums. Not only that, he is like the Obi-Wan Kenobi to many of us young Skywalker wannabes in the spec game. The guy has done so much to help me and has helped me kind of formulate my process and feelings on certain spec strategies um, more than any other person. You guys have heard me talk about IDW books, Be a Big Fish in a Small Pond. That came from learning from Tim Walker. Um, you hear me talk about play the long game. Don't play the short game. Don't go for this quick flip next week that you may miss time. Go for books that you think you can buy at current market value that a year or two from now are going to be skyrocketing. That came from Tim Walker. Um, going long on certain books. Finding a book that you believe in and then buying as many copies as you can get your hands on. That came from Tim Walker. Um, so much of what I do in retrospect, looking back on it, came from sitting under his learning tree. And here's the best thing. He's accessible. So I can reach out to him at any time, ask him a question. He was happy to help. Um, he's one of my absolute favorite people in comics because he's all positivity, no negativity, no drama, um, all about helping other people. And if you can't find a book, the guy will help you find the book that you're looking for. Um, so Tim Walker getting recognition like this, a hot pick on the hot and cold show, long overdue because he is somebody that, you know, people will name various names who have YouTube channels, guys like Brian and I and others. Um, and to be honest with you, like I can't hold a candle to what Tim Walker does. The guy's amazing. So the Walker report on comicbookinvest.com is a great column just to get a, like an insight, kind of a behind the scenes. Think about hard knocks to an NFL team, um, a behind the scenes look at what he does and what he's thinking when he does it. Um, so I cannot advocate that column enough. Um, I cannot advocate you reading that on a weekly basis out there in Simpleman's Comics Family and sitting under that learning tree yourself. And then reach out to Tim because he, he's somebody who's happy to hear from readers. Hi right, guys, it's your boy Carolina Chris 26 Back at you again this week with another one of my hot picks. And well guys, I am on my way home to bag and board my comics. It has been a really hot day today. And just to be safe, I have the fire department behind me just in case I accidentally burn the house down this time. So guys, you ready for my hot pick? Let's get into it. CBSI exclusive 219 out of 500. Or is that 300? 500. Wow. That is just a beautiful copy, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot, at least a 9.9, you know what I mean? It's, this is definitely a 9 8, but it's got to be a 9 9. I don't think I have a book in my collection that looks this clean. Corners are sharp as I don't know what. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, I actually won this from Simple Man's Comics. Thanks guys. Uh, it was like a while back when I won it, but still, I'm a treasure for life. So, anyways, guys, hold on, let me drink a little bit of this sweet tea. Oh, man, I feel bad for you people up north. Can't good, good sweet tea. My hot pick of this week is Image Comics. And why I say Image Comics is, well, I have more than one book that I wanted to pick from this week. And I was like, well, I can't, how can I, can I do both books? Or how does this work? So I said, well, you know, both books I want to pick, they're under Image Comics. They're both under the same banner. Why not label this video Image Comics and let the chips fall where they may? So, well, leaves me my first pick of the night, guys, because I'm talking a little bit too much. Uh, the Walking Dead 171 is the first appearance of Juanita Sanchez, the Princess of Pittsburgh. They just cast uh, Paola Lazario, I believe is how you say her name. Um, I'll pop a picture up of her on the screen. Uh, yeah, her. They just cast her to play Juanita Sanchez, the Princess of Pittsburgh, in this season of The Walking Dead. Now, I know a lot of people are probably like, man, The Walking Dead hasn't been good since season five, season four, season one, season six. Yeah, well, I kind of felt like that like last season and that, that, that finale, I was like, nah, dude, Walking Dead is back. Now, now they're getting ready to battle with the Whispers. It's going down, and I think they're going to a season 11 and think the show's going to stop after that. But season 11, it's also been rumored that Maggie is coming back. And Maggie's first appearance is The Walking Dead issue 10, I believe. Um, that book, you know, it's it's not no three four dollar book right now. I can tell you that. But anyways, guys, uh, yeah. So Juanita Sanchez, the Princess of Pittsburgh. This is her first appearance. Um, this book is not out of reach yet. You know what I mean? I don't know if I don't think it'll get up to astronomical numbers, but this is a hot book to get right now. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it, they just cast her. It was just announced at New York City Comic Con, which I did not get to go. This weekend has been so such a bummer. I mean, today's my mom's birthday. And my mom passed away uh, March twenty second, twenty nineteen. So it's like I knew the day was coming all this week. You know, this past week, and it's like my mind's been all over the place. Cause I mean, I miss my mom. Mom, if you're watching from heaven, I love you. I miss you, and I wish you was here. Cause, anyways, guys, yeah. So, uh, this is her first appearance, one seventy one, um, and then we have her origin, uh, the Walking Dead one eighty seven. Um, but the one you want to get if you get your hands on it is the B cover, with the pink signature. So my next book that I have under Image Comics for tonight is Bitter Root. Bitter Root. So, Bitter Root is uh, a family of monster hunters try to settle their, settle their differences before humanity is devoured. Copy sales went up uh, compared to the previous week that it was announced that the Black Panther director, Ryan Coogler, was hired to produce. So, we got our, the director of Black Panther, Ryan Coogler, who's going to be involved with this here. So, it is going down guys can't wait to see what he does we already seen what he did with black panther this is the d cover there's a bitter root number one uh akiro homage variant uh by sanford green that's the one that's selling for a little bit more change than uh pretty much any of the other copies that i found and always uh, the a cover is always a good one to get um trust me there's a bunch more i could throw up on screen but time is a ticket so uh, I hope you like my pick, guys. Uh, be safe. God bless. And uh, happy birthday, Mom. Peace. So, first of all, thanks as always to Carolina Chris for his picks. Talking Walking Dead. Bitter Root. I like Bitter Root more as hot right now than I do Walking Dead. i kind of given up on Walking Dead. He does make up a good point that, that casting news there is some people out there right now hunting those books down. Personally, I think it's going to turn out to be another Walking Dead 108 Ezekiel book where it's going to be hot right now and then just... <laughs> but you had the privilege of attending their panel at Heroes Con. If you guys were interested in checking that out, it's a link in the description of this video as well. But Jack, what do you think of the pick? Well, yeah, I love the pick. You mentioned going to that panel. Um, it's, it's even deeper than that because the creators behind Bitter Root, they're South Carolina boys. So I've gotten to know them over the years at just about every convention I am at. They're there, big, small, and different, and they've been promoting Bitterroot hard for a number of years. Um, I've put a lot of people onto Bitterroot, um, and you know it's a great series, and I think it's going to be a hit movie. Um, one that he didn't mention from Image that's really moving right now is Gideon Falls as well. Um, Gideon Falls getting James Wan attached to kind of direct and showrun that project for Hive Mind and Dinesh Shamdasani. Um, has kind of sparked those books. I, over the, the weekend, sold quite a few Gideon Falls books on eBay. So that book is definitely moving. Um, and we talked about that book last week as what? Like a cold pick, didn't we? So that that's how quick the market can turn, where something that's a cold pick last week, we told you news was coming, right? I couldn't tell you where I knew that or how I knew that, but I told you it was coming. And it came and it moved and now that, that stuff is hot. So, yeah, we mentioned it at the onset of the show that New York Comic Con didn't have some of the big, splashy um, Marvel DC-type news. But there was some indie news. There was some indie projects moving forward. Very happy to see um, Bitterroot and Gideon Falls, two of my favorite Image comic books, moving forward and heading towards production with monster directors attached to them. And, yeah, I kind of agree with your sentiment on – um, Walking Dead last season, I actually didn't watch the season as it was going, but I did binge it on Netflix, and I will say I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but I, I do think Netflix or uh, Walking Dead spec is damaged, to say the least. So, yes, I would be selling those right now with the spiking price, but that's just me. You guys buy what you like, sell what you like. So the last pick on the hot list this week comes from Phil from Vintage Comics and Toys and CBSI member. All right, this is Phil, live from New York Comic Con, Vintage Comics and Toys. Uh, I want to share with you guys the hottest variants from the show. Uh, the Spawn 300 Silver and Gold Edition um, sold out 10 minutes into the show. Um, I'm seeing the gold selling for like $400 online, and the silver selling for $75. Of course, I wasn't able to get it. Um, this is the original one. Um, this is still pretty hot, selling for like 
110 to 125 on eBay. Um, plot number one, uh, this was a limited uh, one out of 100 uh, from Vault Comics. This is flipping between 200 to 250. Um, I've heard it's really well written, haven't read it yet. Um, and also, uh, the secret variant came with that comic book. Bought it. I believe this is a uh, limited to 250. Uh, the Stephen King homage variant. And that's looking for 75 bucks. There's a lot of people swarming around trying to get this book at Bloom Studios. And this sold out maybe an hour, two hours into the show. And uh, here's the gold crown version of it. There's also a silver one. I believe these were limited to 250. And they're flipping like 50 bucks. Shannon Mir variant of uh, Spider-Man 1, Mary Jane, black and white. Um, this is flipping around $50. A lot of people going to Comic Mint grabbing this one too. But yeah, just want to share with you guys uh, what's hot for the year of Comic Con. Um, NYCC exclusives have been getting hotter and hotter as I've seen every single year and uh, very in demand. So uh, thanks guys. So at the beginning of the show, we kind of talked about NYCC and there we have it. Phil talking about those NYCC exclusives. They caught some major buzz over the past weekend, especially that Spawn book. But what do you think, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. Um, NYCC variants were kind of the talk of the market, especially the variant market over the last week. Um, we saw uh, indicative of what's going on with just a view of the Hot 10 list on comicbookinvest.com. They dominated the Hot 10 list. You have not just publishers making their own variants, but we also saw stores making exclusives for NYCC. Collectors were eating up everything and, and anything NYCC variant. Um, there were some great projects, some great books. Whether that will hold over time is another story. Um, some of them will hold, but some will end up inevitably falling and they'll just be kind of the book of the moment. So I would caution spending huge money on some of these books, but either way, Definitely a, a valid hot pick. Shout out to Phil, who does our Con Recon articles. Um, he's our kind of man on the scene at a lot of these big conventions. Um, and you see he had a great setup for NYCC. Um, and he got us a lot of great information on the happenings of NYCC. So uh, shout out to Phil. Great pick. Um, definitely NYCC Con variants are about the hottest thing going right now. I also want to give a shout out to Phil for that awesome t-shirt he was wearing in case you didn't notice he was wearing some cbsi swag this show is brought to you from cbsi swag.com use that code hot cold 10 get you 10 percent off that way you can get those t-shirts hoodies beanies everything like that cbsi swag.com but with that being said we're rolling right into the cold list right now starting with this pick give me a c give me an o give me an l give me a d cold pick time baby and why is cold pick time my favorite time of the week? Buying opportunities. Kid you not. We talk about this every week. Cold picks are great buying opportunities. Why are they cold? Lots of debate here and there. But uh, my cold pick for this week is Watchmen. Now, some people might be like, well, why is Watchmen a cold pick this week? There's a show coming out in like 13 days. Well, you know, that's why I'm wondering. It's a cold pick. Show's coming up. Lots of discussion going on. And yet... Prices are still kind of flat. So the number of copies has spiked. A, it, it's picked up a little bit. I'm not going to say spiked. It's picked up a little bit. But the prices themselves kind of remain middle ground from the last year or two. Nine eights. And you see $589. You see uh, $675 for a signature series. You see $629.99 best offer. Those are kind of middle ground prices. $600, $500 for nine. Those are really middle ground prices. We've seen spikes of uh, the book was like seven hundred some odd bucks last year, almost like seven fifty, maybe seven twenty. Um, and there's a rule that um, I don't hear people talking about enough, and that's a rule of halves when you talk about graded books, CGC books. Now, if a nine eight selling say for six hundred dollars, um, the nine six should be about a three hundred dollar book, and the nine four about one hundred and fifty, and so on and so forth. Rule of halves. Now, it's a not a perfect rule, but it's kind of a good rule of thumb. Well, when you start looking at 9.6 sales, uh, 175, best offer, 139, 143, 180, you just keep going and going and going. It's kind of an undervalued book, in my opinion. That should be picking up a little bit more steam with a show 13 days out. 
Sounds like the show is going to be really good. Why is this pick cold? I don't know. Are people concerned about the fact that um, maybe the show might not be as good as they're hoping? Um, is it because it's a DC property? Who knows? Um, let's talk in the let's talk in the chat, guys. Brian, Jack, why do you guys think this is going to be a cold pick? It's a great buying opportunity. So let's close out this week with you guessed it. Pinky's out. Peace out for the greatest community around. Have a great week. Count Man Andy. Make sure you guys check him out on his YouTube channel, Count Man Andy. But talking Watchmen being cold. Me personally, I think part of the reason why the comic book is cold is I'm glad the show is on HBO. But we've also heard how this show is going to loosely, that's going to explore the Watchmen universe. It's not going to really dive deep into the comic material per se. So there's not that frame of reference that you're getting as far as people buying up issues because they're going to see it in a show like you normally do with that option speculation. I think it's cold only temporarily. I think this book will heat up. It's a classic series. Cold right now. I wouldn't say completely cold, but for what you would expect, especially with the hit show coming to HBO, um, brings up a good point. But that's just my thoughts. What do you think, Jack? Well, yeah, um, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, most of us who have been collecting for a while, like I've got the one through 12 set. I've got the trade. Um, you know, I've had them for a number of years. They've been a member of my PC for quite some time. Um, so, you know, I haven't spent money on Watchmen product in a long time. And I think it's going to need to be introduced to a whole new audience. Now, yes, the show seems to take place in the future, later on in the Watchmen story. Um, but it'll introduce the Watchmen to a whole new audience. And my hope is that some of these younger comic collectors will go back and now feel like they need to have that early Watchmen stuff. Um, also, another thing that will help is this week, um, today, uh, DC released uh, the dollar version of Watchmen number one. So th the book will be accessible to readers. Hopefully some people pick that up, gave it a read, realized this Alan Moore classic for what it is. And we'll go back and buy the original first series. Either way, what what Andy was talking about about how classic this series is and how what you just said, Ram, there's no doubt. This is the probably the book that created Reader Buzz. So I just think that this will be a classic book for all of time. It's gonna have ups and downs, but you know, this is one you ride for the long haul. Here's a quick question though. Do you think it would be hotter? if there weren't so much of those delays with the whole doomsday clock. You know, I actually meant to say that and forgot it. You're, you're a hundred percent right. That because the, the books got hot again when, you know, the whole rebirth shock of Watchmen entering the DC universe, if doomsday clock stayed on schedule and maybe ha had a little bit more of a salacious kind of Watchmen oriented story, we probably would have seen, continued heat from that series but there was a time when that original Watchmen series and even the before Watchmen variants were doing extremely well in the secondary market and that time seems to have passed so thanks Andy for that pick and our next cool pick well I'll just put it on the screen and let you guys find out who it's from all right guys it's your boy Carolina Chris 26 back at you with my cold pick of the week and well guys my cold pick of the week is Omega Man number three first appearance of your main man Lobo um, when I bought my copy I bought my copy from my LCS and it was around when Lobo was on the Krypton TV series um, my LCS he cut me a deal I mean he could have charged me more but he let me get it for 40 bucks and this is at least this is a 9.6 for sure um, but you never know with CGC you, you can have something that looks like a 9.8 and send it to him and it'll come back a 9.2 so <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he sold me mine for 40 bucks, and uh, uh, around that time when Lobo was on the TV series, there was a rumor going around that we were getting a Lobo movie, um, so that did not happen, but when everybody thought we were going to get that movie, these books were selling for 60, 70, 80 bucks. I even found one copy that was a 9.8 candidate for sure that sold for 100 bucks. Um, so yeah, the books were selling for more to be sure then. Now, if you look on eBay, and I don't know where you shop at, you shop at Facebook, Instagram, the flea market, the pawn shop, Walmarts, Walgreens, wherever you shop at, where I looked at was eBay. And on eBay, I have found a few copies, quite a few, 
that are selling for about 40 45 50 bucks tops um, and I found a couple that were around $45 at or best offer so you hit them with an offer of 40 bucks and you too walk away with a copy for 40 bucks um, so yeah guys uh, prices on this is definitely gone down now if it's a CGC 9.8 it's obviously going to be more than a hundred bucks. I have I have not found one on eBay that's that's less than a hundred bucks and not a not, not a CGC nine point eight uh, for sure. But you know if if that's the route you want to go, then cool. But I me mean, myself, I would buy a copy that looks to be in good shape. And if it needs a press, I got a guy. You know what I mean? I get it pressed, send it to CGC, and then boom. You know what I mean? I'd have less than a hundred dollars in the book to be sure. Uh, but yeah, but you never know, guys. Uh, we, we, we could still get that uh, Lobo movie. So yeah, guys, uh, now's the time to get you one if you want to get one because uh, who knows, uh, prices of this book could jump right back up. And then, you know, if you don't have a copy, you'll, you'll be mad. So that's my cold pick of the week, guys. Omega Man number three. Your main man, Lobo. I'm your boy, Carolina Chris, 2-6. Be safe, guys. This is my cold pick of the week. Take care. Peace. So, May Man Lobo is kind of cold. Uh, I agree with it. There was some speculation. I mean, I remember it. But it's cyclical. We saw it a couple years ago. That book got hot again when there was rumor that Dwayne Johnson was in talks with DC to possibly play Lobo. We turned out it was going to be Black Adam. But Lobo's cold. Plus, this isn't a rare book so i think wow. some of that's indicative of how many copies are actually floating around out there if you're a fan of lobo i'd pick it up every time you see it especially right now while it's cold but what do you think jack yeah um this is a book i find from time to time at conventions for like 20 to 25 dollars and i'm always grabbing it kind of at that price range and every time there's even talk of a lobo movie or tv show it spikes up 60 80 bucks i tend to sell it um because like you said it's so prevalent it's it's out there they're not hard to really find, but it ha the character has such a cult following. There's so many people that love the main man that, you know, that book is always going to be popular and in demand. You mentioned Dwayne The Rock Johnson um, talked about for his casting. I have been petitioning and chanting loudly that we need his cousin, Roman Reigns, to be cast as the main man Lobo. I think uh, that it would be some natural casting. He Whatever just, takes him out of WWE. <laughs> he was just in the most uh, the most uh, recent Fast and Furious spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. Um, but, you know, I think we're going to see Lobo eventually. The DC uh, movie universe, we've talked about this, is a mess. But I actually kind of liked the depiction of Lobo on Krypton. I thought it was better than I expected. So um, I'm a Lobo fan. It's a good 90s character. But we'll see. Warner Brothers, DC, they got to get their act together. Hello again, everybody. Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with my cold pick this week. My cold pick this week is really not cold at all. It's just more of a, a tepid pick because it's really a buying opportunity at the moment. There's sort of this lull right now with everything to do with the Wonder Woman 1984 movie, um, which of course includes Cheetah as well. And I think right now is really good is a really good time to get your hands on some of the Cheetah keys. Um, I was looking on eBay over the past week or so. Prices are really low. Um, I was particularly surprised about Wonder Woman 160 and how low prices are on this book. When there was first some announcement uh, surrounding the Cheetah character, this book popped like crazy. Now you can get copies, you know, kind of low to mid-grade copies for 50 to 100 bucks, which is really cheap comparative to what they were uh, about a year ago. So you might want to get your hands on one of these right now. Now's the time before there's any huge sort of trailer announcement or anything like that. Um, and then, of course, there's the there's the stuff from from this uh, second series, Wonder Woman. There's the number seven, and then there's this, the number eight, um, the first sort of modern cheetah. And then there's you know some of the other kind of recent books that may pop. There's the Jenny Frisson B cover for um, for Wonder Woman uh, from a few issues ago. There was an Art Germ, also a cheetah cover from a few issues ago. Um, and there's there's a few other cheetah sort of books that that may pop. Um, but these are the two kind of that, that come to mind for me and the number seven, which I don't own a copy of. Um, but, you know, I think that with the popularity of that original Wonder Woman movie, uh, I can't imagine that these books don't go much higher as soon as we get some sort of announcement. You know, while people are kind of, you know, wishy-washy on, on the DC movies, they still always say whenever I ask them, oh, but Wonder Woman was good. So... 
I can't imagine why it won't be good again. And I think that these keys are going to eventually pop when this comes back on everyone's radar. So that's my cold pick for the week for now. But it's definitely a buying opportunity to get your hands on some of these cheetah books before they uh, go back up again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. So, Jack, I like this pick. It's a great market play type pick where he even said it's not really cold. It's just kind of a tepid pick. But Wonder Woman 84 slash Cheetah got hot when the movie was announced, got hot when the villain was announced, got hot when the casting was announced, seeing it kind of die down again. So you're in that valley right now, right before the trailers start hitting. You know it's been in the can for a while as far as being as far as far production being wrapped. But great buying opportunity. What do you think? Well, yeah, I've gone on record on this channel saying that I think Kristen Wiig is going to kill this depiction of Cheetah in this movie. I think she's this is going to be big. Um, I've grabbed those art germ year of uh, the villain variants. I've grabbed that uh, Wonder Woman, I think it's 13, 1 in 25 incentive. Uh, I think it's Alex Garner cover um, from the New 52 run. Um, or it's, excuse me, I think it's Justice League, actually, that depicts uh, Wonder Woman and... Um, and Cheetah. I've grabbed this Jenny Frizen Cheetah variant. Um, I've grabbed that uh, that most recent first appearance of Cheetah. Um, Did you and grab I'm some keep... Cheetos? <laughs> Chester Cheeto. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing that because when this happens, it's kind of like a stock market thing. Like when you believe in something and the market dips, you don't sell. That's not the game. It's not, you know, buy high, sell low. You'd go harder because you're just getting more buying opportunities. And this is, like you mentioned, the cyclical uh, buying market. But you know, Brian, you know what I really like about that video? All of those awesome Star Wars toys Mike's got in the video that I almost wish he could inform us about. Toyinformer.com coming soon. Say what? Toyinformer.com? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. But with that, we're going to get into the last pick on the cold list. We're talking about Dollar Bin Digging author Peter Renna. All right, everybody. Back here with my cold pick. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit topical. And with the uh, NYCC exclusives uh, being on everybody's brains these days, I'm going to take my cold pick from there and say that the DC foil variants are cold. Well, at least to me, because I don't even know if the current ones are selling or not. And if they are, I would ask, why? Why? Why does anybody care anymore? I mean, how many of these things are there? I mean, what am I going to do with this? Anybody care about Batfleck anymore? Yeah, a foil version of it? Eh, probably not. Probably stuck with that in a long box until the day I die. Uh, this one, well, this one's kind of nice. I'll keep this because, you know, Gal is still uh, nice to look at at least. And But at least those were uh, unique covers for, uh, for the foil editions. Now they're just basically putting you know current covers in foil like you know this was, i think was last year's was catwoman which is a nice cover and i like it but i don't know what the point really is is there really isn't much of one so you're spending a little bit of extra money to make it shiny i mean congratulations i guess you know they got us they got us for a few more bucks but uh i don't know i don't see why anybody cares outside of like the jim lee you know exclusive wonder woman that was actually hard to find. There's plenty of these things out there. I mean, go ahead and look. If, I'm sure if you look on eBay, there's probably at least twice as many listed as actually sold. So in my book, that's cold. So if the market is flooded with more, twice as many as actually are moving, to me, cold. So I don't know. I don't want to crap on these uh, foil variants if you're out there spending your money on them. But uh, I don't know. I just don't like them. So I think they're cold. Oh, those DC foil variants. I remember when they were hot, uh, especially right around Rebirth launch, the Jim Lee foil variants. I actually have one CGC signature series signed by Tom King, Jim Lee, and, you know, the five Batman authors. But they had their day, and right now they're definitely cold. We even had Baltimore a couple years ago, some CBSI members at Baltimore Comic Con that bought up a bunch of foil variants we're going to try to sell them off and they didn't move as quick as they were and that's when they started hitting that downward spiral there are some gorgeous foil variants out there i pick them up for pc if they're cheap not able to sell them right now not for the profit that you could a couple years ago when they definitely hit them when they first hit the market right jack right and you got to look at what it is it's really competition based now not number one dc comics is down a little bit but even take that out of the equation right when you go to a convention like new york comic-con when we talked about some of the hot books, right? You got to look at what they're up against. 
you're getting amazing new cover art, you're not getting that from DC. You're just getting the foil treatment for the most part. You're getting hot independent titles. Um, you're getting limited, limited micro print runs. You're definitely not getting that from DC. You know, once in future saw 250 and 100 print runs respectively on their two covers. Um, the plot saw a hundred print run, you know, things like that, that really are going to spark demand. You see cover heavyweights like J Scott Campbell doing covers. Um, we saw like unique innovations like the glow in the dark ghost rider cover, um, which was serially numbered, which I think was a cool addition to the book. Um, and I hope that more variants do that. But when you have all of that kind of stuff going on, it's hard for just like a foil version of a regular cover to really pop on the market and, and kind of do anything. So I hope DC goes back to the drawing board and starts innovating. I think that they had their time with that, but that time is gone. And with that, that's going to wrap up our list. We'll bring it up on the screen here right now. So real quick recap, hot list. This week we have Spawn. We have Catch, Blaze, Ghost Rider, that whole Mephisto, Hellstrom. We also have Tim Walker from the Walker Report. Make sure you check that out on comicbookinvest.com. We have Thor, God of Thunder. Jason Aaron's, end is, Jason Aaron's run is ending. Donnie Cates has taken over, so that always brings a little bit of heat. And we have some image option books, Walking Dead with the announcement of the new character being cast and our more excited <laughs> and the one we're more excited about, that whole bitter root with Ryan Coogler being attached to it. But on the cold list side, we have Watchmen. We have Wonder Woman 84 slash Cheetah. We also have those D we also have Lobo. And then we have DC Full Vin. <laughs> then we have DC. Then we have DC foil variants. So what do you think of the list tonight, Jack? I think it's a great list, and I think it really highlights the fact that New York Comic Con, and whether it was news coming out of New York Comic Con or the variants at New York Comic Con, has kind of had the attention of speculators across the market over this last week. Um, you see that with several of the picks, and uh, I think that that has kind of been the theme of what we've been talking about. And the thing about that is it won't last. By next week... We'll have a whole new group of things to talk about, whether hot or cold, um, that probably will have nothing to do with New York Comic Con. And that's just the way the market works. And that's why the hot and cold show is so important, because it's important to highlight on a week-to-week -week basis the moving uh, trends. And I liked having especially a book like Gideon Falls, a book I talked about, um, which was a cold pick last week and a hot pick this week. Anything that we talked about in the cold picks this week has the potential to be a hot pick next week or the week after. Um, the one that I would keep my eye on is The Watchmen. Right, so make sure you comment. Let us know what you guys' hot picks are, your cold picks are. Also, make sure you click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe so that way you never miss a future video. Tomorrow night, we have the CBSI Bolo Show. Friday night, as always, we have the Last Call Final Order Cutoff Show. And what do we do in the final order cutoff show, Jack? We talk about pre-FOC. Pre-FOC means pre-final order cutoff. That gives you the opportunity before final order cutoff at 10 p.m. Eastern time the following Monday. Um, that is the time when you have to get where stores have to get their orders in to Diamond Comic Distributors. When those orders get cut off and you're no longer guaranteed to get your copies, this gives you the opportunity to get your orders in with your LCS or your online comic shop or wherever you buy your comics from, make sure you're locked in on the books that you want and make sure you can get the best possible price for these books before the other speculation communities and talking heads out there start talking about these books and raising the prices and then you're left chasing rather than being prepared. And that's just what we do because, again, we're all about community and transparency. We have the last episode up on the screen right now, so be sure to click that so you guys can watch it. And we'll 